definition of intelligence has been hotly debated at times. How do you define intelligence? Uh, right. Well, I would start by saying that I get psychological constructs cannot be defined in words, as I was saying to my undergrads uh, just a while ago. So it's simply not possible to have dictionary definitions of psychological constructs. In fact, some people would go as far as to argue that it's not possible to define anything at all with words. So any word-based definition of a psychological construct is bound to be uh, inadequate. You can't really, you can't really put a, a definition on any term. It's certainly not an intelligence, and uh, we've known that because we've tried for over one hundred uh, years. So the best you can do is you can possibly provide like some kind of pointer that, that points towards your notion of, of intelligence, but it's not something that needs to be like memorized and inserted into the dictionary. Um, and so I would say, having researched this, this field for, for a very long time, and I think I've come to some sort of at least first conclusion, and I, I published a paper that has just come out actually for the 40, 40th uh, anniversary of personality and individual differences. And I will be referring to this paper, I guess, uh, fairly uh, regularly through through the interview or through our talk today, because I've expounded that, you know, I've just presented my, you know, my entire understanding of, of uh, what, what I, I see as the, uh, uh, you know, core definitions, core issues, core interpretations of the whole field of intelligence. So in a nutshell, when it comes to definition, I would say that radix intelligence, which is what I call my definition and, and the model of intelligence, I call it radix, which means uh, um, it's root, uh, it's a Latin word for root. Radix intelligence uh, is the primal energy that underpins the mind activity uh, in its entirety. So I would say radix intelligence is, is, the, is the primal intelligence that uh, the primal energy that uh, uh, underpins mind activity in its entirety. It's a very general definition. So that's what I would um, give as a, as a definition of intelligence, but it's just a pointer towards you know, the construct that I'm trying to, um, to describe or draw attention to. Okay, um, we'll come back to that and, and unpack radix intelligence a little bit more later, but that'll just move us along for now. Why are you attracted to this field? What got you into intelligence research? Yes, I mean, yeah, it's uh, quite interesting. I, you know, I came into psychology through management, and I think that I was in New York when I was studying like a, a business administration. Uh, it was a very general degree, so I was doing a lot of things. So obviously, you know, I was taking, uh, you know, you had to take all your maths and your, your English and history. You know, and uh, I picked up a book back then, I think it was in 94, 95, when the bell curve was published. I don't know if you know, you must know the bell curve, Hanstein and Murray, right? So, so that was like a number one bestseller. And I, you know, I used to like bookstores. I've, I've liked bookstores all my life. And, and that's when I picked up a copy because you know, it was all over the place, you know, number one bestseller, it was a huge stack. So I picked up a copy and I started uh, uh, reading it. And, you know, I, I found the whole idea, very the whole field very, fascinating so i got into intelligence through the um uh bell curve i mean i was interested in it but you know psychology more generally was also you know i had other influences that got me into that but intelligence specifically i remember picking up this this the, the bell curve book okay um it's it's quite interesting to hear how people got to intelligence uh, to intelligence and for many people it's reading one mm. text or a class that they took that sort of intrigued their interest. Yeah. Is the most important finding from intelligence research that everybody should know about? And when I say everybody, I don't necessarily mean academics, but everybody out there. Is there something that everybody should know about intelligence? Um, right. Well, I, would, I would, as I see, and in my opinion, I think everybody should know that intelligence is. Uh, um, is everywhere, right? All the time, everywhere, everything, you know, the whole universe is always intelligent. And I, th I don't think that this is a, a conclusion that you would necessarily draw from the literature on IQ. 
there's very little that you can rely on that converges in the literature on IQ, as you know. I mean, every single finding is disputed. So I can't say that there's any single thing from the entire literature of I, uh, I, on IQ that I've come across that I would say, you know, this is the core finding. I would say you know, my, my conclusion, which I, I believe is very fundamental conclusion, is that everything always is maximally intelligent. And the only uh, way in which this intelligence is hidden or obstructed is through the, uh, um, uh, the manifestation of the individual ego. If you take that out of the equation, everything is always maximally intelligent. And certainly I would say, you know, that the entire psychological literature on IQ doesn't even go anywhere near where, where it needs to go to uh, touch on these, investigate these issues. It's extremely limited. That's why I can't really point out and say, you know, you should all know about this, you know. I don't know what others, I would be very curious to find out what everyone else has answered about this, but I really don't think there is a single finding in the field of IQ that is uncontested. I think that's a very fair point. Um, and, and I think you've so far given the most, um, let's say, all-encompassing or a comprehensive answer. Most, most other people I've interviewed picked one specific finding and said that for them is, is the thing to know. Um, what do you think is the greatest myth about intelligence? IQ, by far. I mean, I would say IQ is the greatest myth. It's, it's a very misleading concept. I mean, I, and, you know, I was misled myself for, for a very long time. I know this literature like the back of my hand, you know, and uh, I, I just, I, it was just like a dead end, like I've never seen. I'm speaking for myself, okay? So I, you know, I'm just here to give you my opinion, but I've got down this literature for so long and I got in so much depth and detail, and it's been the biggest dead end. Um, so IQ, I would say, you know, this notion of the intelligent quotient and that whole literature and the G factor as well. Uh, these are the biggest myths, in my opinion. Okay. Um, if you had to recommend a text, an article or a book on intelligence for students to read, which one would it be? I don't know. It depends. Because, you know, it's a very uh, uh, fractional uh, uh, literature and, and very, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, what word am I looking here? Well, I wonder, factional and fractional. So I can't really say you know, here's, I've got a lot of favorite books and uh, I, you know, there's a lot of people who I just, ultimately, I think they hit dead ends in their careers as well, but they were very honest and they have you know, big skills, which I, I admired in them. Uh, and I like reading their, their work, but but ultimately it was, it was dead end. So I can't, I mean, there's so many, nicely, you know, honest books out there in IQ, even if I think that they're wrong, where they, you know, in what they advocated in the end, or where they think they, they uh, 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 the field reached, or or uh, how to take it forward, you know, I have you know, serious disagreements about the conclusions, but I, I, I admire their honesty and uh, their, um, their application and, and uh, the skills. Yeah, just one example, I think, is uh, Jensen, uh, Art Jensen, and you know, the G Factor book, which is, is just like, uh, it's a pleasure if you're interested in it. It's a very heavy reading, very heavy reading. But I mean, he's, he's a very honest, uh, uh, very honest researcher, a very honest uh, theorist. I mean, I had a huge admiration for Art Jensen. But I think, you know, just it's because I had huge admiration for Art Jensen and a couple of other. Uh, or several other researchers in this field, and I say, you know, if they didn't manage, you know, to get it where it needs to go, then you know, that's it's a dead end. But yes, but there's there's a lot of books. I mean, and of course, you know, there's, there's books and they're classics that uh, you know people can actually look into. I don't want to uh, recommend. Obviously, the Mismeasure of Man by by Gould is a book. Uh, uh, House M J uh, M J A How H O W E. IQ in question. That's a wonderful book as well. Uh, I found, but right, from uh, both sides of the uh, of the debate. So yes, many books. Okay. Well, how is a is a great suggestion. That's one I that's not yet on the student syllabus. Um, well, how very good. I'm so very yeah. clear thinking. You know, very clear thinking. But, you know, he's a very clear thinker. Uh, uh, Michael Michael, I think is his name. He's a very clear thinker. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, so there is a lot of um, uh, exciting ideas here already that are very different to many of the things that we've heard before. 